Evening. Just wanted to share a little, well, I think it's an interesting setup. It's something you wouldn't often do with a, a manual lathe. Um, I've basically made it into a little shaper. Um, it's a bit of an oddball project. I've got this uh, this hydraulic motor I got from eBay for a project. Um, you can see the other bits and pieces over there. Like many cheap eBay motors, it comes with the spline connection rather than just a plain hub and keyway um, which is fine but these are damn near impossible to get hold of um, trying to figure out what they are this motor didn't even come with an identification plate so I can't even figure out what it was I think it's a DIN 54 edgy spline it's 14 teeth it's a shade under 32 mil um, outside diameter they're involute splines I, I can't find a coupling without spending hundreds of pounds so here we are. Um, I've only got this little ML10 lathe. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit of a Heath Robinson setup, but it does work. So basically, I've machined a little arbor. Yeah, let me take this toolmaker's clamp off. Um, machined a little arbor, um, 14 teeth. It's quite small for a, one of the change wheels. However, I do have a change wheel that's got. 28 teeth so I made, machined up a little arbor this is the the gear that runs the um, the drivetrain for the lead screw ordinarily um, this is the 28 tooth gear that you can swap onto this assembly for doing certain screw cutting operations um, thankfully I've got a 28 tooth gear so machined up a little arbor there's a little draw bar that runs through there there's a little um, uh, sort of thick washer I machined up there bit of threaded rod that runs through and it's all clamped together nicely I actually ended up um, it's a nice fit on there but I ended up super gluing the gear to that and then with the tension right through the headstock that holds that nice and steady um, this well <laughs> it sort of attaches on to where the the guard normally would go and it's got a little um, a little key thing there and it's quite solid so I basically designed this up um, I sort of roughly machine this little tab just to locate with the um with the teeth there and then the toolmaker's clamp goes over it and try and do this one-handed just to keep it nice and solid and it it's it's not a particularly rigid setup but there's no radial force on this as i'm cutting um it's essentially like a shaper action so i don't know how well this will focus but you see the um the little hss tool bit i ground there this is the um for doing the initial cuts it's only thin it's about a bell a millimeter wide um and it's relieved each side it's got a little bit of relief angle on the back um and found a few interesting things while checking this out um i found that if you put too much relief angle on it it will tend to dig in and then the cut gets deeper as you go in and it's not really what you want so having just like a little shade of relief on the back that works really well and you get a really nice smooth cut you can see these little little chips here they look like little miniature versions of <laughs> something you might see on it in a bombs workshop um i think it's ductile iron i'm cutting uh well i'm pretty sure it is it's it's, it's definitely not steel uh, i chose that because it's just a little bit a little bit easier to cut um so it does work with steel i have i have done some steel cutting i don't know where my where my test piece was that was initially steel but um yeah that that, that did work and uh, tried some bronze not so good but maybe i didn't get the tool oh, here it is there we go there were my sort of rough initial cuts um in there you can see something else i learned as well putting the little um uh the little groove in there at the end of the splines is really important i mean these are pretty rough um because I, I was learning basically how to you know, I've never operated a shaper let alone turned a lathe into one so these were my sort of try it out and see kind of cuts um, really important to get that groove as deep as the splines you want to cut and then the chips just break off at the end you can see these here are working much better than this ever did but one of the things I learned I've got some tool bits here that was my that's my grooving tool just to cut that internal groove i've got this little um, <laughs> this boring bar here it's it's ancient it came with the lathe and actually it's really good it takes these quarter inch um bits of uh tool steel it's just there's nothing fancy about it. it's just hss that was another grooving tool and that actually 
I think that's my spline shape that I've ground. I need to verify it. It was just a, a case of get it ground and see what happens. You see, it's not quite even and I need to make sure that this is exactly on center height. And if it's not, how much I need to move this around to make sure it's correct. But I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. You can see I, I actually, I've done this in stages. I did a um, sort of a, a, I don't know, it's about one and a half mil groove with this tool to start with, and then I ran some finishing cuts with this just to see what the what the form looked like. And actually, it came out really nice, just not actually deep enough. So I'm going around at the moment, as you can see, and just deepening up the uh, the initial cut, and then this will come and shave each side off and just finish off the bottom, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, we'll get what we want. Um, what else can I say? Oh yeah, okay, actuating it. So, I tried it with the lead screw. Um, you can lock the, the carriage off and I was trying with the, I have trammed this in, it's it's literally perfect. I spent ages with the uh, with the dial gauge trying to get that trammed in, It's that's, that's lovely. Um, what I ended up coming up with with this, so I've got a couple of pieces of steel here. I just put a, a plug weld in there, that just locates against the the front of the cross slide there to actually take the force the t-nuts there this is actually just loosely fitted there's a bolt arrangement that i welded a couple of nuts in that's just a, a plain bushing up there and the nuts on the bottom there it's just a m10 bolt i think took the lead screw out of the uh, compound that's a piece of uh, bronze um, fossil bronze i just cut a thread in the back of there and there's a there's a bolt that runs through the back into that the allen key there which has been abused and this uh, castle knot that's just there so you can do the return stroke with it the uh, the force on the the forward stroke is taken by the silicon bronze there so just all i do is just tuck it I'll turn the camera around so you can see just tuck it under my arm there and i can move it like that and it works really well as I'm cutting I tend to go in half a thou maybe one thou it doesn't sound like a lot but actually you can you can get the um, you can get it going pretty fast if I go at that kind of rate just advancing it exactly like you would a shaper and in all fairness I've only ever learned about shaper stuff from watching a -bomb videos so yeah, thanks Adam um, if you don't know if you haven't seen Adam's channel a -bomb 79 it's amazing him and Keith Fenner this old Tony you know the holy trinity you, you, what, what more can you say if you're interested in machining and you haven't seen them go check them out they're amazing um, that's about it really the, the rest of this is all locked uh, I've got the the carriage lock here and I've actually engaged the lead screw and run it right up um, that seems to help but there's not actually a little tool pressure in all fairness I really don't have to to reef on this to get it to move it's literally just nice steady even I'll do this one-handed so advance it drag it through and I, all I'm doing I'm just I'm actually just sort of moving moving myself with the with the arm there we go let's try and get some light in there so you can see it a little better there we go we just advance it and it goes I'm not pulling on it hard at all it's it's really um it is really quite a quite a gentle operation if you dial in two thou you really will be heaving on this to get it to move but a thou seems to work really well you get these lovely little chips you get a nice finish in the in the splines so there we go as a sort of an overview yes it's a mess it's a home shop uh, <laughs> it was clean when i started honest anyway there you go uh, the rest of the project i might put on youtube it's basically a hydraulic capstan winch for my land rover um there's a few more interesting little bits and pieces i think i've got some footage of cutting the the hole in this with the plasma cutter and there's a little wooden thing there which uh the plasma cutter gets cable tied into and you can spin the work around underneath like a like a record player and it cuts a cuts a nice hole for you so i'll try and post up that at some point i'm i'm only just learning about youtube it's well one of my first videos so there you go thanks for watching And the moment of truth.
like it was meant to be there. Lovely sliding fit, minimal play, just enough to let it move. Perfect. Thanks for watching.